Homeland Security raided at multiple residences. Quiet on set. The behind the scenes of all the stuff that was going on through like the late 90s, early 2000s on the Nickelodeon set. I'm not with the Boeing right now. I'm, I'm scared to death to get on a plane. I fly into LA to do Michael Franzese's show. I, I meet him and you know, when I get there, he's like, man, I, I don't think he, he doesn't care. He's, he's like, hey, listen. Have you seen everything that's going on with Diddy right now? Homeland Security raided, I believe, multiple residences. Um, and also I'm not sure if they arrested him, but I know like they, he had his kid in handcuff kid or kids, plural. I don't know if, how many kids he has, but they were like in handcuffs and it's got something to do with like sex trafficking. Really? Like, yeah, all this is, they just did this last night. They just raided it last night. Things kept eventually coming out and 50 cent, like is just a notorious troll anyway. Like when something happens to somebody like that, he is having a field day with this because him and Diddy aren't really, you know, best of pals anyway. And he is having a field day with this. He's like, he's like, Diddy's done. And last I heard, I think he hopped on his jet and took off. So I don't know if he's running. I don't know if he's on the lam. I don't, you know, I, I don't wow. know. Wow, he may be locked up with a uh, Jared Folger or Folger, whatever his name is, from uh, Subway. Yeah. Well, you know, funny. I'm actually tomorrow. I'm actually interviewing the guy that uh they got a hold to him in prison. And gave him a oh, beat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The guy that yeah. beat him up. Yeah. I talked well, I talked with him on the phone last night. We're doing the podcast tomorrow. That's the six thirty. I told you I had earlier when we were talking about rescheduling this. Um, I'm doing that with him tomorrow. That's I'm looking forward to that one. Cause he he apparently done that to a lot of uh chomos, but that was and he was like, he said it worked out great because I realized if you do that, he said, not only do I get a little satisfaction out of, you know, punishing those people, he said they move you to another prison and I like to travel. <laughs> So we well, know it should be interesting. Subway, uh, they they after his arrest, you remember they came out with that that sub, the uh, the twelve inch predator. Oh my word! Okay, All right. that's that's not true. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny too because everybody in Coleman was like, "Bro, you know that they're gonna send Jared here from Subway." They're like, "You're gonna be able to write his memoir." <laughs> I was like, oh, "Did I'm, they send I'm, him I'm, there?" No, they didn't. They didn't. okay. So he's got to be a sub protective or something. I, I'm so in shock. He only got they, they had so much overwhelming evidence. I'm in shock that that he got the deal he got. It was like 12 or 14 years or something. Like it wasn't nearly what I thought they would give him. Well, I'll tell you what I just watched, and everybody was talking about it. So I had to go take a look. Was that quiet on set? Have you looked at that yet? No, what's that? Is so that on Netflix? On, it's on HBO Max. Um and it's basically the behind the scenes of all the stuff that was going on through like the late nineties, early two thousands on the Nickelodeon set. There was oh, this I guy, heard. Dan Schneider, that was apparently like making real, not that he ever like done anything, but he just made it really uncomfortable, like workplace harassment. He was making two female writers like share a salary, which was against, I don't know, whatever ethic code or whatever, uh, writer's guild or whatever um just was like would never promote the women he, he made it really uncomfortable to be a woman on set then the uh do you remember that show drake and josh no but i only remember not that i watched it i don't remember my daughter loved it um that was kind of her peak nickelodeon years so it was about these two kids drake bell and i don't remember what the other guy's name was josh something but hence the name drake and josh but like he comes out for the first time on this show saying that the Nickelodeon had hired this writer to, you know, help with like acting dialogue coach or whatever. And eventually like he kind of strategically separated his dad. Like his dad didn't have good vibes about the kid or about the guy. And he kind of strategically separated him and his dad by saying, you know, your dad's making people on the set uncomfortable. It could affect your job. You know, he's probably stealing money from you because he was his manager. He's like, family don't need to be managers because they think they can take a bigger piece. And, basically the end game was to get his dad out of the picture um then he kind of started basically you know doing shit to the kid like a lot of bad shit and the kid was like you know i was in a position to where this guy could take everything away from me that i've been working for so he just kind of let it happen until he couldn't anymore and he came out with it and this was pre obviously twitter and all that so they were able to keep it under wraps because he was a minor um they just listed it as john doe so not a lot of people knew it was him but like they arrested this dude and he was doing it 
like a lot of bad shit. He even says, he's like, imagine the worst things you could do to someone. Right. The most hurtful, vile, sadistic ways. And he did that to me for years. Mm. And he only got like 14 months. Like play yeah. guilty in California, only got 14 months. Got out and was back working on the sweet life on Zach and Cody, like another kid's show. I'm like, what the hell is Nickelodeon doing over there? They don't vet these people for God's sakes. And it was like oh. multiple people that had charges that they were just letting on set around all these kids. It was insane. What's so funny is all those kids' parents probably think like everybody's, they, they have the best people and they, yeah. they care about kids. It's a TV show about kids and that. Yeah, it's kids the exact battle. opposite. And they were going down the list. They like, look at all the people that were there. And it was like Amanda Bynes, who, you know, obviously struggled. Drake Bell, you know, had a lot of struggles with it. Um, it, it was a number of kids on there that just really kind of, you know, didn't really have the best life after that. And it's like, it really screwed them up, but it was, it was like a four part series. It was pretty good, but it just made you want to just beat the shot. I seen where that guy got that anger from and just wanted to beat the hell out of some of those guys. Well, when, just, you, when are you interviewing this guy tomorrow night? Or, yeah. And uh, I'm going to try, if I interview it tomorrow night, I'm going to try to get it up and drop it Sunday because I'm leaving to go to New York Friday. So I'm going to try to edit it and get it up and, and let that be the Sunday drop. Well, I might, well, I mean, God. I might be like I might be interested in interviewing that guy too. Hey, you guys! I really appreciate you guys uh, watching the video. Do me a favor and share the video, and obviously subscribe, hit the bell, do all that. But please, really share the video. That really would help me. Uh, I really am trying to get uh, these videos out there. So thank you very much, and keep watching the uh, the podcast. Uh, the, I tell you the the Boeing everything going on with the Boeing right now. I'm I'm scared right. to, death to get on a plane. I I was reading something the other day and it was like just in the last seven days, it was like 15 things that it went wrong. Like uh, and I think they had one just yesterday. A tire, another tire fell off. Listen, did you see that when they were talking to the Boeing, uh, the people in the fact in the factory that work there? They're like, would you ride one of these planes? They're like, me? No, nah. no. Nah. It was like, are you like you work here? They're like, no, nah, I'm not. Which one was that? Seattle or here? I forget which, I mean, I wish it was like a TikTok where they were under kind of undercover. Oh. And they had like an undercover. They're like, would you, so do you ever fly on these? Like, nah, bro, I don't fly. I don't fly at all. So like, he's like, I'm not flying on one of these planes. I'll tell you that. It's like, oh my God. I made a TikTok from the guy, John Barnett, that I guess he was a Boeing employee for, I forgot how many years, 20, 30 something years, came to the department here in Charleston, which is where I live. Um, was quality manager for X amount of time left and immediately filed a suit saying that they were literally taking bolts and screws out of trash cans and scrap bins and putting them in airplanes just to get through and meet scheduling deadlines. And the week I got back from California or the weekend, I think it was the weekend. Um, he had went to court It had finally went to court. He went on Friday, testified. They were supposed to come back to court on Saturday to finish testifying. He didn't show up. They sent a welfare check to his hotel, and apparently he had unalived himself. Allegedly. Right, in the parking lot, in the car. Yeah, in, in, in the, the parking lot. Right? And so I made a TikTok, put it up, put some pictures up with it. Kind of, I gave it that little flair where I changed my voice a little bit, and it got immediately, like, I guess you would call that shadow banded on on TikTok, it said it violated something, but it didn't tell me what. And so it got like 98 views or something like that. And I probably shared it with 60 people. So it's probably most of that. So I don't understand that they just, I guess, hammer it down. But because all my other ones get way more than that. But that one got right. very, very minimal views. But I didn't say anything wrong. Like I didn't say anything that wasn't true. Boziak put up a, a video the other day on one, on one of the channels, his TikTok channels, put up a video and all it said it was and it's using an AI voice. All it, it it talks about the um basically the de disintegration or degradation or whatever of the nuclear family and how it, how the loss of the nuclear family is destroying this country. And, and so think about that. Like that's not super controversial, right? Put it up, boom. They took it down and they gave him a strike. Wow. Yeah, they didn't take mine down. They just said it violated something. So it was but I'm saying just because he said and the nuclear family is, you know, it's like, you know, you have a mom, a dad and, you know, whatever, two children or three children. Like yeah. because he was saying because that model has is disappearing, it's it's detrimental to the country. 
they took it down. That's all it was saying. Yeah. Like that's controversial. Wow. Right. Like that's, I was, he, he was just like, and he was, he was joking about it. He's like, before he put it up, he goes, he said, watch, this is going to get me uh he goes, this is going to get me um banned. He said that he goes, that's how fucked up the country is. He put it up and sure enough, it did. And I heard it. It didn't say anything that was ridiculous. Didn't cuss. Didn't say anything violent. Just said like that. How is that controversial? Yeah. Mine, mine, I didn't cuss or anything. I just said that, you know, he was found, you know, dead in the car. I was like, did Boeing have anything to do with it or know about it? You know, let us know in the comments. That was it. And it got heavily, I guess, wherever, where they don't show it in front of people, I guess it's just people to whoever goes to your profile and, and looks at it or whatever. But right. I mean, I don't know, but it's like all the stuff that's been falling off of these planes has really got me, you know, second, I got a lot of traveling to do over the next about month. Yeah. Month and a half. It's like, me too. It's not a, it's not, I don't, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of flying to begin with. Look, not just that. I fly mostly spirit. Yeah. I'm already, I already got problems. I mean, I'm, I'm not already, had any issues with spirit. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I know everybody's like spirit, but I mean, I've had, you know, good luck with spirit. Now, granted, I've only flown to like Florida and Orlando, but I've not had problems with spirit personally. I, I listen, I'm not a huge fan. I tell you right now, they're, they're hiring like, uh, you know, dollar general workers and, and, you know, did, did you see, there was a TikTok the other day that said the guy goes, um, he was on spirit and he said they made an, he's like, somebody was having like heart, chest pains or something. He's like, and they came at, made an announcement. They said, listen, we have a kind of an emergency. And they said, is there, is there a doctor, uh, you know, among the passengers? And he just started laughing. He's like, that's spirit. There's no doctor <laughs> on on a spirit airline. See, then they come back and they say, anyone with medical training, like a nurse? And he's like, no, there's no nurse on spirit. What are you talking about? They, well, they keep going me. down the list. <laughs> anyone anybody, who's the intravenous drug user, you know, it's like <laughs> anybody got any experience with WebMD? Yeah. <laughs> with a cop anybody pass uh you know <laughs> pass biology so could yeah. you imagine sitting on a plane and the a section of the plane just flying slam off uh, listen i'd be oh my god could you i i i i'm i'm already not feeling great like i'm already i'm there I, i'm going i don't allow myself to realize what's happening yeah but yeah, if there was noise or a banging or anything, or suddenly it look, and sometimes, you know, with that, you'll get that turbulence yeah. and they'll say, you know, and everybody goes to sit and it's like, I'm like, I, I always try to play it cool. And I look at everybody else. Yeah. And I like, even though now, like I've probably flown more in the last two years and you know, I ever thought about with all the trips and stuff, but like, I still just look at everybody else and I'm like, I, I like to think they're all more seasoned travelers than me so if they start to panic then maybe it's time for me to panic but i haven't had any like really bad turbulence experiences the only thing that i can say i did have happen was one time we're coming back into charleston and they've already said you know you know beginning our descent prepare for landing or whatever we're coming down and my eyesight's bad like i've uh i welded for years i can barely fucking see like i probably should wear glasses um and it's it's horrible we were so close to the ground that I could make out the hotel signs. Right. And all of a sudden it's just, whoa, and we go straight back up in the air. And I'm just like, look at him like, all right, that wasn't normal. Like, but that's not, we're, we're heading towards the runway, you know, and it's just boom, straight back up in the air. We go up, we start climbing, get back out to two. Then you could tell he's starting to circle and it's like a good 10 minutes. And then finally he comes over and he's like, well, we were preparing for landing and we had an aircraft on the runway. So we had to deter that and, uh, do a circle around. We should be landing here in the next 10 minutes. And I'm just like, you know, he's very calm when he's saying that, but yeah. I'm like, had there been a miscommunication, we could have run right into another plane. So it's just, I always think when it's landing, you know, okay, I can let out a sigh of relief, but I mean, damn, you're going to run right head into another plane. We all going to go up. Listen to me, you know, taking off and landing is the most dangerous part of the whole thing. So that's, that's, that's what I'm most nervous. I always just feel the closer I get to landing, I might survive. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I love when I've, I've been on the plane before where I've heard you, you'll hear like a, suddenly you'll hear like a, a oh, yeah. 
and you're in the, in the middle of whatever. And listen, I've, I just happened one time and I remember I looked at the person next to me and I said, that's not good. <laughs> they were like, Look at I don't know how much you fly, but that don't sound good to me. And they're like, yeah, I know. I said, I don't know. Oh shit. I can't. I'm like, you know, plus it's spirit. <laughs> I don't know how you feel, but these people are not top notch, you know? So, um, <laughs> And I have a friend that flies for spirit. Oh, his wife now flies for spirit. And he told me, he's like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, my wife, she's, she's been training and she's going And I went, bro, I didn't even know she was a pilot. He's like, yeah, yeah. She's a pilot. She just doesn't fly. You know, we, we met and she just has never really flown before. So, you know, they're, they're, um, you know, she was a pilot when they met and he's like, you know, but she got pregnant, they get married, she got pregnant. So he said, but now, yeah, she's going back to, I was like, okay. And I met his wife and she's a very nice person, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I've had dinner with them and they're cutting up and laughing and giggling. And she just seems like a normal chick to me. And I, I personally want my, my pilot, um, <laughs> female pilots to seem more serious about things than she seemed. She just seemed like a regular, like in, in I, I would have never told you she was, she was a pilot. I would have said maybe maybe elementary school teacher maybe but no pilot pilot you just hope know. they're getting on there sober than denzel was in that movie flight let are you listen i'll take denzel <laughs> he pulled that shit off he damn sure did and then they gave him shit about it out you know oh yeah i'm like did you see what i did bro you not- couldn't get anybody that alcohol probably helped me oh yeah thank god i was drunk it's like it was three bottles of vodka. No, no, you're wrong. There was four. <laughs> That's what it takes. So you send your people back into those simulators with four bottles of vodka. <laughs> then maybe they can pull it off. Could you imagine the only pilots that could pull it off were drunk? Oh they yeah, send I, them in the vodka because you're you just got to be in a total relaxed state to do that. Yeah, he, like that was amazing. Movie. Him and just well, Sully, you know, landing it right there in the Hudson. That had to take some. That had yeah. to take some balls. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put it right down here. Oh the, my uh, God, just so uh, calm, so calm. Yeah, so what, what you circle around? That's uh, a that's uh, a negative. Yeah, that's yeah. that's negative. <laughs> yeah, it's. I talked with a guy that lived. Uh, he's an actor. He's been in a few things, and he lived up there. And uh, he said that he was outside, like you know, by the Hudson. That he lived right there by. It. And he said he seen that plane coming down, and he said he's sitting there watching. He's like, my God, another nine eleven. Like that oh. was what, you know, thought, cause he sees this plane fixing to go down to, he said, I didn't think they were going to actually land in the water. He said, I thought they were going to fly and hit a building or just go right into the city. Right. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, whew. and then trying to get off of there in a hurry. Like, cause that thing did sink eventually. I mean, they had time to get off, but yeah, it, listen, that was, that was picture perfect. Like that landing that them exiting, like you couldn't have planned it better. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, hopefully you have to land. Yeah. If you got to. Well, at least there, like, if you got out, you could have swam to, you know, shore or something like that. It's not that far. But you think if that bad boy goes down in the middle of the ocean, like, you just. Yeah. yeah that's, that's like the worst fear. So when I was in prison and I sued, I sued Warner Brothers and I sued uh, uh, um, e, uh, IE Entertainment, we had to have people served. The guy that tried or the guy that served like Deborah Rowley. And, and these guys was, um, he was Sully's brother. Wow. Yeah. It's connection there. There's a, there's a connection between me and Sully. <laughs> Just saying. That's, uh, that's an interesting. Ca- and I remember I was watching, I always make the mistake before I fly. Somehow or another, I always get on this channel called Mayday. And it's basically nothing but plane crashes and, you know, aircraft disasters. And <laughs> Why do that? Why I, do I that don't here? know. I don't know. I asked myself that question. It's like it pops up on my favorites in YouTube all the time. And so if it's a new one, I'll click on it. And, uh, you know, I, t- I go somewhere about once a month or at least once every other month. So it just kind of always happens like right before I get on. And I remember why it was one. It was in Florida somewhere. And the mach- whatever they were using malfunctioned as far as like they thought they were higher than what they actually were. Their altitude meter or whatever. So by the time they realized it, they crashed like in the Everglades. And so people are, it, it didn't destroy the plane, didn't blow up. I think some people did die, 
but a lot of people were able to get out and they're interviewing these people, some of the survivors. And they're like, you know, you get out, you're trying to swim, but he's like, immediately you're hearing the sound. And I guess it was whatever sound the, the gators make. Yeah. I was going to so, say they, people died, but it was because of the gators. Yeah. Well, some people died in aircraft, but then after that, he's like, so you're hearing all these gators. And he's like, you know, that's my thought is I just survived an airplane crash. Now I'm fixing to get eaten by an alligator. And what happened was a lot of them did get like cuts and scrapes or whatever. The water from the Everglades and the mud got in there, gave them gangrene. Some of them lost body parts. Some of them did die from the infection, but I'm just like, what a shit way to go. Like you survive a plane crash, then get gangrene, had to dodge off alligators. I mean, it was, I don't know. Well, that, like that's part of the problem. Uh, alligators have tons of like a, a, some kind of bacteria in their mouth. So a lot of people will get bit by an alligator sometimes and they'll still lose the, lose a limb um, just because of the, like, hey, I got bit, but it didn't kill me. No, but the bacteria ends up poisoning get, or doing whatever ba- that does. And they end up losing a limb. It's like I got bit, got away. I still lost a limb. Jeez. So You're lucky to get away from a damn gator. Yeah. Yeah. There was a guy in Florida, I think last year where it was like, went, I guess the bathrooms was full and he went to the back behind the bar to use the bathroom, I guess at the water and the gator come up and got his whole arm, took his arm off. Whoa. Yeah. It was on TMZ. They had a picture of him out there. They, they interviewed him like after he was in the hospital or whatever, I guess it come up and it, it took the whole arm off, like ripped it, slammed out of the socket. People were recording. Like they didn't really know what to do. It was, it was like, I guess they didn't even know what to tie. <laughs> it just ripped right. it right on off. Well, remember the girl that you loved to surf and she got her arm bit off? Yes. Yep. And it wasn't, it wasn't there a kid that got, uh, beaten at Disney By an alligator at yeah. Disney. Wow. And, you know, and, and it was a, it was a, first of all, like if you were raised in Florida, when somebody says, you know, are there alligators? You go, yeah. Then they'll be like, where you go? Any body of water. Yeah. And like as, as a kid being raised in Florida, like I was, you know, I was in most of them, if you ask. If you, you raise in Florida and you say, or oh, are there alligators? And they'll go, yeah. And if you say, well, are they like where? And that you, they'll tell you, that's pretty much what you're just told. Yeah. Any body of water in Florida has an alligator. Like that's just, you assume it. Yeah. You just assume it. And, and because the truth is like my wife and her daughter went fishing the other day. And, um, so they're fishing and her daughter wanted to walk around the pond and fish from the other side. And so Jess goes, she said, mom, do you think there's alligators in here? She goes, yeah, yeah, I do. And she goes, really? And and she goes, it's a body of water in Florida. There's an alligator. And she is kind of like, and walks around and steps up to the water. Boom. There's an alligator. She's like, "Ah!" she comes running back and she, and you know, Jess is laughing her ass off and she's like, oh my God, oh my God. And so she comes in here and she's telling me about it and laughing. And she says, she's like, oh, she's scared of a little alligator. She was, it was five foot long. She is like, that's a baby. Like, that's not a big alligator. Like they're, they're 14, 15 feet. Like that's this, that's a, but it doesn't matter. It, it, it's scary. But, but I mean, that's just the way it is. Like all, all these places, you've been to my place, yeah. all these little fake ponds. Yeah. They all have alligators in them. Even my, my uh, we had an alligator in the pond behind my house and it's got a little subdivision kind of like y'all's, but it's nowhere near like water, but it's those little man-made ponds. Somehow another it got in there. And I mean, it was pretty big. Like it was probably seven foot yeah. and everybody had kind of left it alone. Just like, leave it be. They had told him like, don't feed it or whatever. Eventually it'll go wherever the hell it come from. And I guess somebody's dog got out, went down there and it got a hold to the dog. Oh yeah. And, and I guess, it didn't, I guess it didn't eat it or kill it or whatever. It killed it, but it didn't eat it. And the dog was seen floating in the water. And so then they called animal control and they had to come and get it out. But like, it's a big ass alligator. My wife oh, yeah. walks at nighttime. She walks our Husky and I'm just like, all right, now you walk around that damn pond. You want to like, I'd be careful, <laughs> bro. We, we used to have like, we used to have a cat and every time it would have a litter, we'd wait till the kittens weren't cute anymore. And we just go throw them out in the pond. They just get taken. <laughs> Those gators get big. You know, it doesn't take a lot of kittens <laughs> to, um, <laughs> Jess is like, I, I know you're joking. Animal you're control joking. is like on the way to your house right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. What? I know. Jess is telling me all about it now. She's like, she's like, they like it to be rotten. They'll take them down and let them. Sit. I know that. I know that. Take we were it. talking about, 
the little kid that got grabbed in Disney, we were talking about that the other day, you know, because here's the problem is that the pond, my understanding is the pond had signs that said, beware of alligator. Yeah. But you're a, nor a northerner and you come down here and, you know, you just assume that bodies of water are, are accept are okay. Right. Because you're, you are, you're from up North. And even if you saw that sign, it's like seeing a no fishing sign. You're like, no, yeah. no. you yeah. kind of blow it off. You don't think danger. Yeah. And these people are 150 feet away and their son is walking around the pond and they can see him and they think, oh, we're, we're keeping an eye on him. Not realizing like, bro, you're not that fast and you don't know what's about to come. And the alligator just leaps out of the water, grabs a kid, drags them in, rolls them around. And 10 hours later, they they, they kill the alligator. They find the kid under some log. Under, uh, you know, under the ground, you know, under the, uh, the, the water, like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's horrific. And it's like, you know, in, in one way you got to say, what were you guys thinking? But another way they're like, oh, we're from up North. Like this doesn't happen. This isn't even a thing. Yeah. You need to have better signage. You're like, you know, this many people killed this year by alligators or something, something that maybe jumps off the page. Cause you're, you're right. Like if they see that side, you know, alligators or whatever, you just kind of nonchalant brush it yeah, off. It's, it's almost like, yeah. What are the, what's the likelihood of that? Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Really good actually. Yeah. So there were <laughs> no cats in my neighborhood. Like there so were no you, small dogs. If you had something to say like, all right, nine people have been eaten by alligators this year. Watch the fuck out or something. Something right. along those lines. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing too, is it was Disney and the sign looked very benign. Yeah. It and didn't you're look Disney. Right. You're right. Disney. You're Disney. Well, you know, I grew up on the River Hills Drive, which is, and it's right on the Hillsborough River. And uh, listen, we were there were constantly like once a month, animal control was out there getting an alligator out of somebody's pool or somebody's front yard or under somebody's fucking car. You know, they come up with that thing and snoop, grab them by the by the nose and pull them up and wrap them up and take them and drop them back in the river. <laughs> Bad gator. Not not a way I want to go. Not a way I want to go. You want to hear about um, Franzis? Yeah, please. Okay. So I fly into LA to do Michael Franzis' show. And I go to his studio. So, you know, I, I meet him. And, you know, when I get there, he's like, man, I, I don't think he, he doesn't care. He's, he's like, hey, listen. He's like, you know, I want to talk about your story. We're going to have a just conversation. He said, I don't want to m mention Merlino, anything like that. I said, no, oh, no, I wasn't even going to. <laughs> I go, I wasn't even, he goes, cause I saw you did some videos. I go, no, no, I wasn't even going to mention, you know, I said, I'm, I'm done talking about that guy. I said, and he goes, he said, yeah, he said, you know, whatever. He said, that's fine. And he said, um, I said, listen, I said, as a matter of fact, I said, I had, a, I said, I said, there, I said, there was such a back, you know, a backlash on that, that I said, you know, one, not just the comments I said, but also I said, I had a guy reach out to me and, you know, like threaten me and say all kinds of, of uh, vulgar things and just was a com complete jerk. I said, then he called me on the phone and he goes, what was his name? And I go, um, I said, I think it was like Logan or something. He was, and he had looked at his wife. He said, yep, that guy called him too. Jeez. He called only, you know, Michael picked up the phone and they talked for a little bit. And he said immediately he was like, no. And so he started talking to him, you know, and kind of ex like, like he, he basically was like, no, I'm, you know, I didn't, I don't know what happened. He's basically, they, they had a conversation. So they have this whole conversation and the guy, you know, you know, basically had the, like, he's just a guy that's looking for attention is what it boils down to. He's a guy I seeking attention. Get everybody's number. I've been looking for Francis' number for two years over oh, here. Him on Instagram. Yeah, it, it was Instagram. Oh, oh, okay. All right. But you know, that was it. So you know, that was the whole thing, but it was funny. So this guy is actively calling people up and, you know, threatening them and saying stuff. And then, you know, obviously he's not going to do any of these things. He's I not capable. Any threats through Instagram yet or any, any well, maybe you will for callers. It's possible. Maybe. You can, you know, let's hope oh, you do. I got, I got, I got many, <laughs> I got many. Uh, <laughs> How did you like California, man? You've been out there before though, right? The problem is you're not, you're not offensive. You have yeah. to be more offensive. Yeah. yeah. You're very neutral. I, I'm, I, I try to be neutral. Or, yeah. or you're going to have some really bad guests on, like just bad people. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I got so. a lot of hate for the gene video. Yeah. Like, the gene video. Nothing people... personal, but like just hate for, for platforming. Them. Yeah. 
which is so fun. It's, you know, I don't know, all these guys, it's like, okay, well, this is freedom of speech. It's, yeah. you know, like guys will argue for freedom of speech and then yell at you for letting someone on your platform and telling their story. It's like, what are you yeah. doing? Like, you apparently don't know what freedom of speech is. <laughs> what What do you think of California, Matt? So I didn't, because at this time I didn't stay in San Francisco or LA. Usually every time I've gone, the homeless population is outrageous. Mm -hmm. but I didn't stay there. I didn't stay in those areas. And although you do see homeless, it wasn't as bad. And there was no, I didn't go by any encampments on the interstate. Last few times I was there, you know, the overpasses were packed full of these like homeless encampments. There weren't any. So, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know what happened. I asked, you know, I asked the, one of the Uber drivers and he was, you know, he basically said, ah, they clean them up every once in a while and then they come back and then they clean them up again. And they, he said, so he said, sometimes it's worse than others. He said, they basically just move them around the city because they're, they're still here. Yeah. He said, you in OC. Um, what's OC orange County. Yeah, I was in, well, I'm assuming I was, it was close to LA. I could yeah. see LA. I don't know anything about California. Now I look like an idiot. I, well, I didn't either. I mean, my fucking 40 years old. That was the first time I'd ever went. And I'll tell you, like, I've heard these stories and I want to do a video. It'll probably be the first video I ever do where I don't interview somebody. And I want to cover like the history of the Viper Room back from when it was under Mickey Cohen to, you know, when Depp done all his shenanigans there. And then he, I think it was even the house or the, the host of the um, Molly Bloom's card games where like uh, Affleck and Toby McGuire and all them guys done it. Um, but like, I had heard so much about like the sunset strip, you know, whiskey, a go-go the Viper room. And I met a guy that runs a, a YouTube channel out there. Um, his name's Jeff Crow. And we met and like went down that strip and I'm just expecting like this, you know, nonstop party rock star thing. And it just was not that like we went into whiskey, a go-go. They had a band going. It wasn't really my cup of tea. It was one of the yelling, Irish screaming bands, kind of like the, I don't know, whatever the, the departed people from departed soundtrack or whatever. I can't think of their name. Drop, drop kick Murphy's or whatever. Some, something along those lines. And like they shut it down at like 1130 and they were like, all right, thank everybody for coming out. And I'm just like, well, maybe they only open for people that are playing. And so we leave there. We go into the Viper room. It's like 1145 and you know, I'm all excited. I didn't even realize it was right there. And she's like, yeah, we're doing last call, but you got time to buy one drink. And I'm like, Yep. It's 12 o'clock. Like if there's bars in Monk's Corner, South Carolina that stay open past this time. Yep. I, don't know. I was very disappointed. Well, L LA has always been an earlier town. So even at its heyday, it was like 2 a.m. So right. You came from New York and you're at wherever you were and it's like 2 a.m. You're like still drinking and they're doing last call. You're like, what's going on? And they have like a hard shutdown. That's why there's so many after parties in LA because everything closed down at 2. Now right. they're closed down at 12. Yeah, well, I didn't know where any of the after parties were. I'm sure there was places that were still doing something. I just wasn't, uh, you know, familiar enough to go there. But I mean, it was it was interesting. I mean, I, I went to the Santa Monica Pier and you know walked around there, seen a few things. I was pretty busy, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to like just you know go about. But I mean, it was it was okay. I don't unless has, I had business there, I would never go back. Has uh, Francis put out your um, your no. video? No, um, I think he only does like one video interview a week. And so I don't know if there was anybody between you and I, you know, that he, that he done. So I would imagine it's gotta be soon, but I, I know how it is when I have it. I don't ever bother people about when they drop. So, right. Yeah. yeah Matt, you're, yours, uh, you're sort of pretty well. I think it started at like 70,000 views, like two, three days. No, I, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but you know, that the, the audio keeps going in and out throughout the in throughout the interview yeah. which well, you, i, I uh, listened to it i didn't notice that as much then you didn't listen to it <laughs> oh, you, didn't listen, you didn't listen enough no you you spotted a few oh you listened you listened now i can tell matt i listened to it no <laughs> and what's the rule is it 10 percent, 20 percent? do you skip over i did watch most of your lex freeman i will say yeah. that oh it's sick that, uh, you did jamarcus russell uh playbook there they gave him those uh tapes to study the defense and they were blank and he brought it back. I was like, what'd you think? Oh, I got it, coach. I'm good. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, the audio kept glitching in and out during the Franzis interview. Yeah. Do you I, know I real time or you saw it afterwards? No, I didn't. I, didn't, I had no idea. I, somebody just texted me like, Hey bro, 
I was watching the Franzese, you know, at, at 16 minutes and 12 seconds, you know, it, the audio goes out and I was like, what? So then I checked it and sure enough, it, so what picked up was the camera picked it up. So you can hear me, but I'm clearly at a distance. Yeah. And then two minutes later, it jumps back on for five minutes and then it goes out for a minute and a half and then it comes on for 15 minutes and then it goes out for a minute. I wonder what would have caused it to go out like that unless it wasn't plugged in good or something. Cause I normally mean, if they die, it just dies and you're done. Right. You would think, and it was a lapel you're alive, right? Yeah. 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 So am I moving? Like I'm not moving around. No, I don't think so. It was, it was weird. I don't know. I hope mine well, didn't do that. Yeah. I hope, hopefully it, you know, hopefully it, um, doesn't, um, you know, hope, I mean, I, I was gonna say, like, I, I think that's going to cause people to stop listening, you know, like audio is super important. It is, it's more important than the actual video. Well, if there's a story that can keep them hooked, man, yeah. it's huge. I well, I mean, I've got people that have, you know, they're like, bro, I saw, check it out. It's amazing stories. Like, yeah, I know. I, I mean, I, I hear that. Like I get you, but I'm still, it's irritates me. <laughs> not cause it's not that they did it on purpose. It's just like, oh man, that sucked. Like what a great platform to be on. And so, it's not like you can just hop yeah. right back around the corner and do it again. Right. Let's reshoot this. So Matt, how do you, cause I'm starting to finally do some press. I was like reluctant for a while. I'm like, you know what? I got to promote the show. I got to start doing some press. So I've watched most of your stuff, even before I met you, and you do a pretty good job at giving your story, but it's like a little different each time. For how did you, you like, what was your plan for Francis and how do you keep telling your story without making it redundant and boring? Cause like after Lex Friedman, somebody's going to have, somebody's going to see it before. Right. So when you go on new shows, how do you keep it fresh? I, I mean, I, I think it, it is redundant, you know, you know, and, and I think what happens is people ask different questions. And so that tends to spin it off in a different way. And then I jump back. And then what happens sometimes, like, you know, Franzis doesn't want to do a four hour or two hour podcast. So he, he's like, yeah, let's, let's do, let's try and do an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. It's like, okay, well, then that means I can't tell this story. I can't tell this story. I can't tell this story completely. I can say, you know, that I, I got caught in the bank. They came down. I convinced them this. Like, I can't explain how I convinced them that it was that I wasn't involved. Yeah. You know, I can just say I luckily I convinced them and then I can't. So I, that's a five minute or four minute explanation. So these 10 minute stories become, you know, a minute stories. And then some of them I eliminate completely. And then, you know, by the time you're done, it's like you've taken what's typically a two hour podcast or two hours worth of a story because to get a good version of my story, you need an hour to two hours. So I ended up talking to him for, I don't know, an hour and change, hour and 20 minutes, something like that. And I knew he didn't, you know, I already knew we're over, we're running over an hour. You need to wrap this up. And then when we got to sentence or got to me going to prison, he like cut it off. He's like, well, you know, we'll do that. We'll save that for part two, part two. There's no part two. Like, I don't, what, <laughs> we didn't talk about part two. I'm not coming back out of here. I hate California. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a hell of a fucking plane ride. Like, what are you talking about? But I was like, oh yeah, he didn't want to do it this long anyway. So I, I, uh, I got to I got a your best interview, my opinion. Well, first the OG concrete that, I, that we know that's going to, that's going to be in the annals of uh, podcast history, but my opinion, the best Matt Cox interview and for the 30, a hundred people that watch your shit religiously is the second Julian Dory interview. It was not only the best, but it might have but it been the funniest podcast thing I've ever heard. Yeah, Julian, you know. It was a good one. The second one. The second one with Jim with Jim was there for half of it. That was a banger. Yeah, he I, yeah, he was good on my pot on my um yeah uh my thing. Jim was funny. But you know, Jim, he's a little over the top too. Like guys are like, is this an FBI agent talking about breaking people's collarbones? Like what the hell's going on? And when he was talking about that, I was thinking to myself, like, do you realize what you're saying right now? Like is that the one you just recently did, like not too long ago? Yeah. Okay. Good job, Jim. You, yeah. Once again, you didn't watch that either. It's fine. No, I haven't had a chance. I, 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 it's on your list. Watch that one because one of the guys he was talking about, one of the strip club owners, uh, uh, my a family member of mine threw a chair at the same guy. So I knew him. It was pretty interesting. And the guy was a scumbag. <laughs> no, well. It doesn't narrow it down. Pretty much everybody. But, I but I'm sure to. you guys have this issue, like with your own shows. Like, 
unless I'm prepping for someone that's been on somebody else's show, I really don't have a lot of time to watch other shows. Like I, don't, I, do I, can. I don't watch anybody's show. I don't yeah. watch my show. Yeah. Yeah. That's I don't watch true. mine. Either. Yeah. Listen, I would have never known that there was a problem with the audio on Franzis if somebody hadn't told me that, yeah. you know, like I, I will go back and scroll through the comments, but I won't ever rewatch the, anything that I've done anyway. Yeah. I think the Lex one, I really, for probably the first week, I went through pretty thoroughly the comment section, but that was it. I don't yeah. think I really watched much of it. You know, like it was exhausting. You get, you get a lot of subs from it. I, I, you know, what's a lot of subs? Like to me, I think I probably, it probably I got me 10 or 15,000 subs. Well, that's, a lot. Wow. Yeah. that's a lot. Whereas in the oh, same, wow. in the same month and a half that I would have gotten, you know, whatever, 3000 subs, I probably mm -hmm. got three or three to five. I probably got 20. 15 to 20. You are one away from Rogan. Right. I have a feeling Rogan's heard my name multiple times and has decided against it for some yeah, reason. No, well, I've had multiple people say like, I'm going to reach out to him. I'm going to Lex said, I'm going to talk to him. Look, look, he's like, ah, he's like, I'm, I'm going to be with him in about two weeks. I'm going to mention yeah. him. You'd be amazing with him. And I never yeah. heard anything. So, and I don't doubt Lex did mention it, yeah. but probably he was like, yeah, you know, he probably just, eh, I'm not, I'm not interested in that guy. <laughs> You know, I can see you and Rogan having a really good, be a good, one. Really good conversation. I mean, I would, I don't, yeah, there's not many people that don't, I mean, it's a, it, you know, it's Rogan, right? Right. You know, he's a pretty, well, he's pretty where good. Do you, where do you go other than Rogan? Where do you realistically go after Lex? Um, I mean, maybe I would, flagrant's pretty big Schwartz. Yeah. Those really would be big. great. I, I don't know. How to contact the, well, oh, Andrew, you, Andrew was just on Bustamante. Reach out to Andrew's Andrew. not going to help me. No, no. Listen, Andrew looks at me and, 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 and me even saying this <laughs> is probably going to make him think like when I say this, I think his first response is I don't even consider you like he thinks of me as competition. Stop. And I think that, and when me saying that, I think he's going to be like, you're not even close to being competition. Like <laughs> I'm a, I'm a peasant. So he, um, like, what was I going to tell you? Yeah, he, Wait, you put him on though. Yeah, I, yeah, he's forgotten about that. Matt Cox, Matt Cox. <laughs> was a God, that sounds familiar. Is he a short guy? Was he in prison? So, um, yeah, he he's not. It, well, here's the thing. Like, Lex, I mean, sorry, um, Andrew's still get, pulling big numbers. Too. Yes, both from you know? Lex. Yeah, he's he's pulling like massive. Uh, His number massive. one show, right? I'm just over here hoping that I can get even close to him out of subs that you just said you got off Francis. I mean, if I get 15, that would be like that's way more than I even have now. I'd be yeah, but if you 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 have to throw in there like you have to force in there like you know now I I, I run a uh, a true crime. Oh you oh you know I did. That's like that's intertwined in my story, and it really is because like in the middle of me being on house arrest like i couldn't go anywhere i couldn't do anything i was bored out of my mind so the that was a podcast was like what i grab a hold to that was my therapy right so i definitely had to throw that in there. you know it'd be a good one i don't have a connect with but the ice coffee hour you ever see that one mm -mm. that's a good one i don't know that one. business you show but once in a while i'll have some like, interesting characters some criminals on that one that one and flagrant are about the same size they about three million subs Nice, nice size show. So I'm, I'm flying to, I'm going to LA to do the iced coffee hour on the 19th of, of April. So you're going back to LA. Right. No, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Vegas, Las Vegas. He's in Vegas. How'd, how'd you get that one? Um, David Packow's. Yeah. Right. Cause he was just, he was just on yeah. there. Correct. So I was like, Hey bro. So you got to come on, hook me up. So he put me on a, you know, a chain with them or what do you, what do you guys call that? When you have multiple people, it's like a chain, right? It's, or it's a group chat. Group chat. Yeah. He put me on a group chat and, you know, they said, yeah, well, you know, Hey, when here's when we're available. It's a big show. Yeah. He said, um, I, who, I think I was talking to probably Jack and he goes, he said, listen, I need to let you know that, you know, you may come out, we may do the interview, but you have to understand that there's a chance that we won't air it because, you know, we only air the absolute best shows. And I said, I'm pretty amazing. I'll take my chances. <laughs> and he came back. Ha ha ha. Okay. Well, here, you know, well, like, while, while you're out there, um, there's a, not as a big show, but it's pretty good. Brad Leah. I don't know if you saw him, heard him. 
I've heard business. that name. Yeah, he's a good. He puts on a good, more businessy, but he'll have criminals on. I have some different people on. Because I'm just trying to think. When you're in Vegas, you want to optimize the time. So that's a that's a pretty big one. Uh, uh, Brad, I would look at Brad Leah. I might have a connection to him. But well, I'm, the, 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 my, I'm sorry. The problem is I've already got my ticket. Listen to this round trip. I'm leaving at like eight fifty in the morning. Cause it's a, because of the, of, it's a five hour flight, but because of the time change, I get there at 11. I, from a, it gives me, that gives me three hours to get to the studio at two. I'm um, talk for, let's say a couple hours. Then I, I, my next, my flight leaves at 11. I have a four, three or four hour layover. I get home the next morning at 11 o'clock AM. And I can't sleep on. I've, I don't think I've ever slept on an airplane. Well, you know, you, you've done this before. You got to go to Vegas, and that's your main show. And then you got to plan three others around it. I mean, if the, if I could get somebody that could do it at you know seven o'clock at night, and I could do that for two hours, and then go straight to the airport, you know, or, or six o'clock. Somebody could do it at six o'clock because I'm sure I could move theirs down to one. Like they didn't. They were like, we're pretty flexible. Yeah. So if I had somebody that I could do. What about uh? Didn't the guy that you had on that done all those years in prison that they wanted to Joey to rat on? Isn't he out of Vegas? Gridability or something like that? Oh yeah, is he out of Vegas? I'm oh, he is sure. out of Vegas. You're right. You're I'm right. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you know, I don't know how I feel about that. He's super tall. <laughs> you can't get any taller than you standing next to Johnny Mitchell, pal. <laughs> That was ridiculous, right? Like, what an embarrassing photo. <laughs> yeah, like, I was six. I would have cropped six. the shit out of it if I did. <laughs> I mean, I like I. I was thinking like I need a box, you know, like if I could stand on a box or if tele, two, three telephone books, if they if they still made telephone books, nobody watching this show even knows what a telephone book is. <laughs> They're like, I don't. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yellow pages. Yeah. They yeah. should pay big money to deliver those. They pay like five grand to deliver like a crate. They were heavy. The uh, cops used to beat people with because they wouldn't leave bruises. Yep, yep. They pulled them up. Boom, boom. Well, what else is going on? What What's everybody's? Because we're supposed to be talking about our channels. Yeah. All right. So this, this I, I need some nothing. people to go sub to mine. I really want to break ten thousand. This is really, uh, it's really bothering me. That I'm not broke ten yet. To me, that's like that number that I really want to get to right what are you at now factory number it's uh like eight eight and a quarter eight two fifty you need a, you need a short or a tiktok to go viral yeah. yes yes i do how'd you your, uh how'd your gene interview do oh um, good he's like my you're talking to me or matt yeah uh, you oh it was like it's my second best video oh nice yeah i think the only one that beat him was like a pretty og porn star I think she's at like 77 something. Last time I looked, he was at like 50 or 55. And he told me when we done it, he was like, he said, what do you average get, you know, on a video? And I was like, ah, you know, sometimes two to seven. I was like, some of the really good ones have, you know, 10. I said, I think Ramundi's even got like 20. And uh, he's like, I guarantee you I'll do 25. And I'm like, well, if you do, I'll be happy, bro. You know, I'm not, and I, was, I was just like, nah, but he doubled it. All right, so let, let me ask you this. Actually, an important, I think an important question. I, I, I have a feeling I know how Matt is going to answer this, but let me ask Wade. So I've had informants on before. You had informants on as well, right? Fucking and right. I, I, I got a lot of heat where I was giving them softballs, which, which respectfully, I, I accept that criticism. So now when I do it, I try to be more critical, try to dig deeper, that kind of stuff. Do we have the responsibility – to be the I got you guys and to be critical, or is that just not our job? Our job is just to be a sounding board and let them tell their story. What do you think? I think, it, I think it depends on who you want to be. Yeah. You know, because to me, like if you're really like balls out on somebody and you're trying to drive and, and just say you do on there something that they've been lying about on multiple yeah. shows, yeah. anybody that's even remotely, fibbing or stretching something is then going to be reluctant to go on your show yeah sure. because i mean a lot of people want to go on and tell their story now granted i don't you don't want to have somebody on it just tells lie after lie for an hour and a half but you know like so for perfect example and you've recently met her uh andrea Giovanni. Yeah. yeah i was on the show so i had her on and yeah. i think i posted it last week 
And it's, it's a big, like misunderstanding, or I'd say misunderstanding, misconception, I guess, because any article that you read, it reads like she cooperated, you know, it, and I actually read it to her from the article. I'm like, this yeah. is what the article reads. And I read it and I'm like, it says Andrea played ball with the feds. They made her an offer. She could not and did not refuse. Yeah. I was like, now, if anybody reads that, they're going to think you cooperated. But, you know, and I, at least how it was explained to me, she was arrested. But for her to go free, her her then husband, I think John Fogarty, yeah. and then I think her brother had to plead guilty. So yeah. she didn't have to cooperate. They, right. She was basically the bait. Now, depending on how deep you want to go of if you even sit down and talk with the cops, you're a rat or whatever, yeah. you know, that's kind of a fine line. Yeah. But did she cooperate? Was she, Did she take the stand and put people in prison? No. Those yeah. people you know, turn themselves in willingly. Well, so, she, yeah. She, uh, she is very good friends with, uh, my friend's uncle who is very important in that life and that wise guy life. And I know for a fact he would not talk to her if she was a cooperator, nor could he, nor could he. he's a, he's a captain with, with one of the families and he just, he could not talk to her if she was an informant. She has brought his name up a few times on the podcast. Surprisingly, I was even I was shocked. So she mentioned a few names. So you can't really narrow it down. But my point being is, I know him and I know his family, and they're not talking to somebody who cooperate. They're just not, and he, and he can't publicly. Now you're right? speaking about somebody that's current. He's a he's a he's with a, a, a minimum uh, Gambino captain. So okay. he uh, he uh, is not going to talk to her if she's in a form. It's too 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 much. Not even even in 2024. It's not worth it for him and he would distance himself So the fact yeah. that he talks to her for me is enough. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of how I went with it. It's like, you know, it really just depends on how deep people want to drive. And like, she answered the questions. She even, I laid it out. Like, you know, if you watch get Gotti, the way they edit that show is like, you yep. know, she's we sitting around talking about murders yeah. and it's like, you were sitting at a table with John Gotti when we all know, no, that wasn't true. Correct. And she said, yeah, I was talking about the people that was involved in my case about yeah. talking about possibly committing murders, which that I believe wholeheartedly. Yeah. But the way they edited it, it edited it right after maybe Ruggiano was talking about Gotti. Yeah. And then she's like, we were all sitting around talking about murder. So it's not that she said I was sitting there with Gotti. Correct. It's that art of how Netflix seems it together to yep. make it sound like she's saying something yep. that she really didn't. Yep. That, 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 and let's be honest, it's entertainment, right? Right. She she did not use, and I think it's going to haunt her. And I love Andrew; she knows that. But I think it's going to haunt her when she used like "We ran the city, we did right. this, we did that," and I think that's what jammed her up in terms of. Yeah, you know, we talk about this all the time. Yeah. Matt can care less about any of this, and yeah. most of his audience feels the same, right? Yeah. Well, right I, now, he's probably. I'm interested. It. I think it's so funny the the. Yeah. You know, Matt's learned how fickle these this bunch is, and I told him that when we done that very first Joey interview, and I don't know if we've just talked about this with you, Tom, but it, when we got done, he was like, "You want to share this on your channel?" And I'm like, "No, nah, I'm good." I was like, "I was like, really? I mean, like it's free content. Like this is like an hour and a half of good. So I thought it was good." And he goes, "I feel like there's going to be some issues." <laughs> he said, "You go ahead." And I was so like, you, okay. La, so, la, la. So, so what do you guys think of uh, Kevin disbanding from the skinny podcast? Kevin, uh, what's his name? Kevin uh, Connolly. Wade. Uh, well, I don't, I didn't really know a whole lot about it. You I'm know, I, I, from what I've heard and, and I don't know of any of this to be true. So if you or anybody knows, you know, yay or nay, tell me, but he, I, I want to say the number was like a hundred grand kind yeah. of finance the thing. Yeah. And with them getting kicked off YouTube, I don't know if that kind of threw monkey wrench into it or not necessarily kicked off, but everything with yeah. a thousand fucks a second probably got demonetized. Yeah. So I don't know how the Patreon deal worked into it, but I guess that relationship went kaput. And I think not too long ago, didn't he post up a picture with Chris Pacciello? Uh, Kevin or Joe? Yeah, uh, Kevin. Kev no, Joey wouldn't have Kevin. I mean, no, I did not see that. I heard that. I heard that. So do not quote for God's sakes. If it didn't happen, I'm sorry. I heard it. Um, and you know, if he did, that's like the biggest slap in the face, yep. to, you know, Joey and his whole everything that he's, you know, preached for the last couple months. Because Matt, do you know who Chris Pacciello is? 
Um, no, but I, I have, it's my understanding. He is someone who has, who has cooperated with the authorities yeah. and is not liked by, by the, the, the organization, the, um, let me think that the, 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 mob. the mob, the mafia industry yeah. as a whole. He's, he's just got a little bit better of a backstory. I would say than most like yeah. he was with, was that the Bath Avenue crew? No, he was with uh, the Staten Island guys. Okay. And he was the one, and this is, this is a great, well, it's a bad tragic story, but also a crazy story where he was involved with the home invasion where they shot the woman, Judith Shemtov, and they were, they got, um, so the guy was like a smug, uh, what did they call it? Smut guy, smut dealer. He had all like porn and that kind of stuff back then. There was a lot of cash. Suppose he had like a million dollars or whatever in the house. I don't forget the number. So they got to the door and the guy, Tommy Reynolds, who are actually supposed to get out this year, um, was high and he shot the woman in the face. He killed her. Um, Pacciello was the guy who set it up. And then, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Calandra, Calandra was there, right? Jimmy Calandra yeah. informed uh, Tommy Reynolds went away for 50 years. Uh, Fabrizio uh, Franceschi, I forget his name. And uh, he just got out and he went away for 40 years. But Jimmy Calandra rolled and then one other in that crew. Oh, and then Pacciello rolled. And uh, and then that, that was it. Pacciello also rolled on the bananas as well, which was a little screwed up because he was really close with like TG and a lot of those guys. And he kind of rolled on some of his friends, went down to Miami, kind of like did his thing and they left him alone. But it's interesting. You remember the, and you got, you guys are, I don't know if you're a Florida guy, Wade, but Matt's in Florida. You remember the guy, Gus Bolas, he had the um, casino cruises and the mob killed him. Did you guys hear about that? The Suncoast casino. Oh, no. I remember that Suncoast casino though. Yeah. So he had the license and the, the mob was basically going to buy him out. Uh, and it was two big shots. This guy, Abramoff, who was a big shot with the government, uh, uh, and another one, uh, 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 Eichen. Um, anyway, remember the 1-800 mattress? Yeah. That guy. So the 1-800 mattress guy and this big politician were going to, or big lobbyist, were going to buy this guy out. They basically said, hey, here's $300 million. Didn't pay him, right? When they didn't pay him, he went to the mob, this guy Muscatella, which is Gotti's right hand, wasn't a made guy, but was very powerful. Went to him, the guy Bolas wound up dead, okay? The way the guy Bolas was killed was he was driving, and it kind of was like a movie mob hit, got cut off, middle of the street, and got killed. Muscatella was a quiet guy, so he wouldn't have killed him that way. So it's like, it's he got released recently from Muscatello. So the belief is... He didn't do it, but somebody else from the mob did, or from somebody from the government, because Abramoff could have walked into any Republican office. But here's the crazy part. You know, 1-800-Dollar Mattress, the woman who got shot in the face was his mom, Judy Shemtov. Oh, wow. Yep. See, before Chris um, cooperated, and Matt, you may or may not have heard the story, but he moved after that robbery got botched and that lady got killed. Chris took off. Correct. He in Florida. And he opened up Club Liquid, yep. I think it was. Yeah. And like he's down, nobody has a clue, at least, you know, the regular folks, that he was involved in all this. He's sure. dating Sofia Vergara, Madonna. Madonna. Yep. Like, you know, this club is like the spot to go to yep. in Miami. It is the that like all the top people go well, there. He was also like, back, he was also backed by wise guys and wise yeah. money at the time. And the then I, next thing you know, he's indicted on this murder. And then he does cooperate. And the, like Tom said, he comes back to Florida. I think he eventually did get back into club business. And yeah. he's got like some, some very high end gyms and yeah. stuff down yeah. there. Most spa too. Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's, it's an interesting story. They made a movie that was kind of loosely based on it called um, Kings of South beach. Yeah. Um, with uh, Jason Gedrick and Donnie Wahlberg. Yeah. I think. And his book and, mob over Miami was a bestseller. Yeah. Yeah. That was, and I interviewed the lady, Michelle McPhee. Yeah, uh, I interviewed her on the oh, show, wow. and this is what she tells me now. Because she was like, "Any idea you have?" She's like, "Make sure you get, you know, a copy of it or get it patent." She's like, "Kings of South Beach was my idea. I went to dinner. I pitched it to a director. He said, I'll get back to you.' And the next thing I know, it's being made without me." Thanks. Yeah, I mean, not that it was a great. You know, I think it was like a B movie or whatever. It never went to like cinemas, but you know, still a good movie. No, yeah. never heard of any of these, Matt. No. No. <laughs> no. 
Yeah. It's, I mean, it is, it's a pretty interesting, just cause like he was dating all of these top yeah. people and there's a, there's a show, I think it's called mug shots. It's kind of like yeah. gangsters, but it's called mug shots. And I think it's called like mob in Miami or something like that. It's worth a look if you're, you know, yeah. got some time to kill on your flight to LA or Las yeah. Vegas. Well, Matt, Matt, Matt and the audience that don't know why it matters. So they were at a heat game, I believe, I believe a heat game. And Pacciello was there and Molina was there with a bunch of his guys. And supposedly, supposedly, this is as far as Jerry Capisi, uh, Merlino mouth, you effing rat. And then he got, and supposedly Pacciello got in front of his face and says, call me rat to my face, do it now or I'll beat you up, blah, blah, blah. Confronted him. Allegedly, Joey backed down and, and it hit, made the news. Joey did respond on his podcast about it. It seems believable. I don't think Chris went up to him. If anything, Joey's probably guys with them. At the time, Joey allegedly was a sitting boss. I don't think he would do that to a sitting boss. So I don't think nothing, ha- I don't think anything happened, but that was the alleged story. Well, Chris um, is a pretty big interesting big fella. The yeah, big he's... dude, got hands, he, he yeah. can strap. If I had to bet on those two, I'm putting my oh. money on Chris. Come on. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, okay. I'm not sure how all this ties in. So, so Connolly backed Merlino. Yeah. Merlino and Merlino gets, he's having major troubles. He was having major troubles on YouTube, right? Like he's having a hard time getting his stuff monetized, which yeah. is really honestly ridiculous. I mean, I, whoever's running the channel obviously doesn't yeah. understand YouTube. Yeah. And all he had to do was curb his language, you know, um, watch his titles. And if, and worst case scenario is, is go through and edit out, you know, and, and that's just, you just censor, you just beep a few of the dirty don't bring, up the, don't bring up the former president and the election either. Yeah. Right. Like, like it wouldn't have been very difficult to, to make those, to fully monetize that channel. But so they, then they decided, you know what, forget this. We're just going to post shorts and we're going to go to, um, Patreon. Yeah. So they go to Patreon, they charge 10, 15, 15, bucks, 15, bucks. 15 bucks, 15 bucks, yeah. bucks. kind of steep for a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, at 15 bucks a month. I mean, it is, you know, his fans would, you know, they probably pay that. I mean, I don't know how many, if there's enough to sustain, you know, a living off of it, but I could be wrong. Like, I mean, listen, uh, um, Johnny Mitchell has like 2,800, uh, Patreon followers that are paying 10 bucks a piece. Damn to watch his stuff. Yeah, so Johnny Mitchell already has like a million subs. So he does, but, but I mean, it's look multiple things that this brings up to me, to me, everybody that I know that has a connection to or knows Merlino has said he's never had a business or a business partner. He didn't try and screw over. Yeah. So when, when I heard, you know, the whole, you know, Connolly is putting up the money and backing yeah. him, I was thinking, well, how long will that take for him to screw that up? Yeah. You know, like this gives him a perfect reason to say, well, we're, we're going to do a Patreon and we'll pay you out of that. And then just not pay him. Well, so well, who knows what, what, what probably happened. And I, I heard it through a fairly reliable source that the advance was in the neighborhood of a hundred, right? Yeah. So he's going to give him a hundred for his health. It's an earn off, right? Hey, here's a hundred. Here's an advance. God knows what Joey does with it. That's his business. And then over the year or six months, whatever the defined period, he earns it off. So more than likely, he was probably on the end of the earn-off period. Maybe it was 100K plus 20%. And then number two was Kevin was supposed to tee him up for a movie deal, which obviously didn't happen, or at least didn't happen. If it did, they would still be engaged. But the part that I found kind of not suspect, but interesting, because I, I, I someone do me a try to do media for a living uh, for my clients is Kevin has is on the West Coast. He has a, a studio. He has a, a network. He has a um, studio in, I believe, in Florida. And he wasn't given a lot of, the show was not given a lot of support. Like, they didn't do a lot of in-studio in Florida. When it was in uh, uh, South Philly, you could easily find local guys, pay them, B-roll, throw some labs on, maybe a light. And, and so quality was poor. So I just think Kevin ran lean on purpose because he knew he wasn't getting his money back. So when he got his money back, he's like, you know what? I'm still friends. Let me get out of it. So the show is going back, back. I to can't Jimmy. imagine he got a hundred, a hundred grand back. That, that there's no way that that YouTube show did not make a hundred grand. I mean, they, they, they are, they are like doing, they are doing some merch. 
Um, they are doing uh, some sponsorships. They are. I would doing, think Kevin got a piece of that merch, probably. Yeah, they I probably. Mean, like, I mean, if it was me, if I was staking it, I would get like half of the first money out. So if the show makes yeah. two hundred, I get my hundred out. Yeah, they still need to operate. They still need to eat. Snuff probably has a uh, some type of stipend and rev share as well. So he's got to get paid. But the truth of the matter is, Kevin probably got his money back or whatever was agreed to, and he split because it just didn't make financial sense for him probably that's see, like my- if you look at the show now the way it is like they're interviewing guys like well the rick flair episode the audio was was horrible yeah but all what the they're doing now everyone i've seen the audio has not been good well lately and i did subscribe to the patreon to hear a few of them and like the ones that they're doing now are much better so oh. if they could have started out yep like now from the beginning i think yep. it would have went off much better because but that's what kevin was supposed to be supposed right. to do Kevin was not only supposed to be, hey, here's the money, but he was supposed to make him part of his podcast network. I mean, you know, maybe that could have been Joey's plan too, was to do it rough or whatever, get the followers, and then cut deals with Kevin. And then yeah, but they're, they're at they're at fifty k followers, which is I'm I'm at forty seven five. What is that? Like? So fifty k yeah. is not what it used to be, and it's not a lot to be honest. Right. But it was fast. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah that's pretty fast, you know. But, but here's the here's the thing for anybody watching, and we're kind of talking about our channels. There's not a lot of money in this. There's just not. No. And just because he did it doesn't mean there's money in it, right? Yeah, you right. can get a five, eight, ten, fifteen k a month. Don't get me wrong; it's a lot of money. There's a place in the United States for fifteen k, you can live like a king. But when you chop it up, they have an editorial team, they have snuff, they got Joey, they probably got some backers. We got some overhead and probably does not 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 money you could live on to be honest I feel like you can get snuff for like free pizza or lunch like we'll feed him lunch i feel like he'd come on i don't i don't feel like he's, that's he's a nice guy i'm sure he's a nice guy I'm, i bet he's wonderful I, but, I did i did have snuff on the podcast yeah how did your uh i had him on when he first 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 came on it was like a live right? he was like in his car on the way to penn state yeah. but I, I was happy to have him on but you got kind of like the first out of the gate uh, real interview. How'd that go? It went good. I mean, we, we more or less folk. I knew like, listen, Merlino's even reluctant to talk about anything mob related. So I just figured can any of that and not even really mention it because if Merlino can't talk about it, I know snuff's either not yeah. going to or be very minimal. So we really kept it about him. And, you know, I didn't even really know that he was, um, a recovering addict. Yeah. We talked about his addiction and how we beat it. And then kind of how, they picked him for this because he was doing certain things on social media for the car yeah. commercials. And, yeah. and so it just kind of was a natural fit. Apparently he's known Joey is his whole life. Joey he's a good co-host, a very good co-host. Yeah, he, He's a good yin to Joey Zhang. And like Joey has always been a charismatic dude. And I think he's loved the camera and obviously he's relished the, uh, the, the limelight, but you could tell when they first started, like for the first couple episodes, and I, I'm sure my show was the same way. It was rough. They were try, probably trying to find their footing, you know. It was yeah. a little bit. So he definitely needed, you know, snuff somebody to take the uh, take a little bit of the the light, if you will. Let Let, let me ask you this, because when Joey first came out, he was going to tell some of the stories. He was going to talk about uh, gambling, picks, that kind of stuff, which I thought was really good. Now he's doing like the route of the month, that kind of stuff. I find it interesting to hear from his side of his perspective, but that doesn't reach a a, a broad audience. What do you guys think? Is that the right move to do the whole ride of the month thing or is that kind of too niche it's it's silly but his audience probably gets you know uh, you know what's funny about it is that if he could do it without the disgust yeah like really kind of and, and do it like it, in an educated way like here's what happened here's this yeah. here's that the guy got in there he decided to cooperate you know which i don't agree with like if he could do yeah. it almost um systematically instead yeah. of the whole the whole that rap bastard motherfucker fuck that motherfucker like enough already like get get, get over yourself like yeah. i understand you're a tough guy you wouldn't cooperate right but you know but if he could kind of go through the motions and explain the guy's story and how it yeah. how it played out and then you know accurately and then the guy testified and three people went to jail one guy got this one i like really lay it out i think that's too much i think that's too much homework yeah. snuff could do it You know, I don't think Joey wants to put that much effort in, but I think snuff could do it or at least bounce off, like have the, well, here's what happened. Then Joey, here's what that could be good. I think if he edited the videos better, yeah, I I think he could go live. I mean, not live. I think he could go get back on 
on YouTube, do long form content. I think he could make a living at this. Listen, I do four podcasts a week. I'm making more than enough uh, uh, um, of, of a living on, on this. Yeah. But I think I'd like to get one more thing in before you guys, uh, before I can see Wade. Wade's like chomping at the bits. Give me one more second. Um, <laughs> he's like, he's, he's ready to. Okay. So one more thing. The thing with Connolly. I'm going to say, and whether or not I, this, we ever find this out or not, I think Connolly left, lost his ass. I think he's probably upset. And honestly, let's face it, we've all seen Gotti. Not sure I want him doing my movie. Um, if I was Joey, not sure he could, you know, pull that off in, in any, in a successful way. So, you know, he probably did, and, you know, listen, and the fact is, is Joey is his own worst enemy. If he could curb his behavior even slightly, he probably could get everything he wants out of life. I agree with that. I can see you know, that. He has an amazing story. Amazing. Um, but he's got an attitude. I mean, he's got this this horrible, horrific attitude that's limiting his ability to make money because he could be a superstar on YouTube, but his he's his own worst enemy. He won't do it. Well, he's got the fan base for sure. People do yeah. love him, Matt, as you well found out after the, the video. Course. He's got his you know, his, his dedicated fans. But the thing is he has the people around him to give him enough facts to pull off a show. Like you were talking about Tom, you know, the people we push back or I don't know. Who yeah. They're, they're, they're um, uh, I'm pretty prominently listed on the site. Cause I did a show with, uh, <laughs> all right. So if you go on the website, I'm basically on the front page. Okay. Or one of the front pages. Okay. So, uh, I had a I had a show for a number uh, for eighty episodes with a guy John Panisi. Right, he's, he's kind of like the latest informant. That was a made guy, right? So I had him on a podcast. We did a nine show series. Went really well. We hooked up. We said, you know what? Let, let's try a show together called the NBA Button Man. And the whole idea was it was it was kind of like kind of two Italian guys and um, and uh, kind of from different backgrounds. We're going to kind of do different stuff. Obviously, we went right to the mob stuff. That's what everyone wanted to hear. So we pushed back, kind of got launched. He was one of the people that testified against the guy, Dominic Crea, his father. Okay. Who was the other Italian guy? Yeah, coincidentally, yeah, coincidentally, one one of my one of my cousins, basically relatives, was one of the um, defendants with his father too. So like, they think I'm just like, you know, I'm not I'm empathetic towards it, but I'm a straight guy. I'm a not a wise guy. I'm just because I'm Italian doesn't mean I like this shit, you know. Right. So, um, so I had a show with him and we're driving up to Boston and, uh, we're doing a live. Right. And there was, you know, there's, um, sock accounts, there's uh fake accounts that people have. There's one called Amber alert. He's like known in the community. <laughs> and he just, he actually, I think he was meant to, to be like a, 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 a sock account against Lee Cole. I don't know if you guys know, you know, I think yeah. Wade, Wade knows Lee. So but anyway, so that's been on Lee's show. Yeah. So long story short. Um, John, uh, John's driving, I'm driving, John's doing the live. And instead of trying to delete Amber alert, he, um, makes him a wrench. Oh shit. And when he makes him a wrench, the guy not only deletes and blocks every single person in the chat, basically deletes and blocks like 2000 people, like instantly, like just like, and, <laughs> and then we went live again and nobody was in the chat. We're like, <laughs> what's going on? There's 90 people watching. There's nobody in the chat. So John, and with fullest respect, got angry. And he shot back. He goes, you mother effer, blah, blah, blah. Said some very nice choice words. So we pushed back, took it as context. Look at this informant's behavior, right? Going after a guy and his wife. Meanwhile, it's, it's called Amber Alert. who's trivializing abductions, right? I don't know how that's normal. I don't know how that's normal. So John is going after this guy for basically screwing up our channel. John was pissed. Them saying he was right, but he was pissed. Saying your your wife is this, your wife is that. The guy's a sock account, and I'm just driving. I don't know what's going on, and I get put on the we push back because I sat idly while a lying informant was going after some guy's wife named Amber Alert, who basically destroyed our channel. So anyway, not knocking we push back. I'm just giving you the context of why I'm on there, and I believe in free speech. I'm not going to strike it. I'm not going to say anything it's kind of funny actually to me but Matt, anyway. you might make it on there um, i don't know if, i don't know if it's strictly mob people but it's basically like they just that. make a bank of people that have informed i yeah. have heard like i've heard that name i feel like i'm on their instagram or something i feel like they, 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 re, 
feel like they posted something on their about me on their Instagram. Well, Joey and them are like real tight. I believe Dominic was on the show. Listen, yeah. I, I listen. I believe in free speech. I see both sides of the coin. I see, you know, a lot of times the entire American community got into the life, um, got screwed over by other people they trusted. They took an oath. I, I get that. But on the other end, as an honest Italian American, they weren't like good people in society. They weren't like the valedictorian of the class. They weren't like the good people that you could trust. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I kind of see that side where, you know what? And the other part is it's a slippery slope, right? Our informants for the mob bad, right? But then it's like, well, we need informants for terrorism. What about sex rings? What about pedo rings? So it's like, oh, you could have informants for that, but informants for the mob are bad. Yeah, I don't buy that. It, what, don't and buy you want to know what I, I love, Tom. He's a good person. <laughs> not about that, but <laughs> Wade, Wade, when we talk about informants, he's like, eh, I don't know. I don't want to say anything. But, you know, the, the funny part, though, is like some of these people that have committed murders and, you know, then turn around and cooperated like I met them and hung out with them. And they're they're nice guys, at least yeah. to me. But I tell people that I'm like, look. I don't know them in the context of the life or, you know, yeah, in, in the mob. I know, know the context yeah. of, you know, how we know each other now. I'm, I interviewed them and then, you know, we've hung out. Like when I went and done Ian Bick's podcast in Connecticut, I hung out with Anthony Arlotta. Yeah. He took me around the city. We had dinner. Everybody knew him. Everybody treated him with respect. He's definitely not hiding. Like he's on Facebook. He posts everywhere he goes. I, I, got, I got a funny story with Anthony when you're done. I don't know. Hopefully Anthony won't get mad. Oh, go ahead. So we met up in Boston. We were going to do some stuff together. But um, met up in Boston, had a few drinks, hanging out. And we want to have cigars. And it was like a W hotel or something. And you just can't smoke anywhere. So like, I, I was going to smoke outside. So we go to the pool area. And uh, we're having cigars, having a nice time, having some scotch. And, you know, kind of like the you know security guard comes by, this younger, skinnier kid. And he's like, you guys got to go. And we're like, oh, one was done, like, whatever. I try to give a kid a hundred. He's like, I can't take that. I'm like, really? Like, just like, really? I'm like, all right, we'll finish. You know, apologize. We're almost done. Comes back. And I think he was really like, really like, ne- like kind of needling Anthony. Like, he obviously didn't know who he was. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, like, just like, like, it's not worth Like, you know, I put my cigar out hand. Anthony was being a gentleman, but the guy just kept needling him. And we, we put out the cigars and, but the kid just kept needling him. I'm like, just please let this go. <laughs> just please. And anyway, Anthony was a gentleman. It was fine. We got out of there. I don't know why he didn't take the 100 beyond me. And then we finished our cigar somewhere else. And, and that's what he told me. Like, we were out, and it was probably like 8.30, closing in on 9 o'clock. And he's like, listen, you know, don't take offense. He's like, but I'm, I turn in early. He's like, I don't stay out very late. He's like, because, yeah. you know, people see you. They may want to try something. He's like, I'm not afraid of anybody. He said, I'm afraid of what I'll do. You know? Yeah, yeah, true. And and I understood that, and so he was like, "Yeah, so just well, don't." He take moved that back. He moved back to his old area. He's in his old area. Yeah, he's, he's in the neighborhood he grew up in. Old gym. Yeah, yeah. Like he just does not give a damn. Like he went, which I mean, I don't know of like other than the Giaz brothers, I don't really know how many people he put away from there. I know he mostly New York guys that went away when he testified. Yeah, I think he put away the brothers, and then he also another made guy. Um, because Felix, who, who and one, one or two other guys from his old crew that he either helped or helped or helped put away, uh, or gave him a longer, I think a longer sentence too. Because the guy had admitted being a made guy, which compounds the sentence. So Matt, so, to give you a little context on who we're talking about, I'm sure you've heard Whitey Bulger, right? Right. So the two brothers that we referred yeah. to that went to jail, it was a uh, Freddie and Ty Giaz. I think Freddie was the one that allegedly uh, beat. Bolger to death with yeah, the yeah. shock yeah. in the prison. Okay. Yeah. And I think they've done a lot of, I don't want to risk, run the risk of demonetizing this thing, but uh, they've done a lot of other stuff other than beat him to death. They uh, popped out a few, uh, I guess, things you would need in everyday yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I heard what the, the outcome was. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say, it's, it's funny when you were saying like, you know, you hung out with a guy, he's a nice guy. There was an, when I was in the medium, there was an old guy, they called him old man, Jim. He was probably 70 something. And, uh, he's probably what five ten in decent shape. You know, he actually kind of limped, but he was in good shape, but he had a kind of a limp. 
and he painted. You know, oh. we were both we both painted. We would see see each other in the uh, art room, and I always liked him, right? But everybody seemed kind of not everybody, but a couple of guys seemed standoffish. So I used to walk with him. I'd help him carry stuff and walk back and forth, you know. And uh, I had this guy. This guy's name. Uh, I forget his name. I can't believe it. The last name is D Geronimo. But anyway, one time he said, you, you like old man, Jim, don't you? I said, yeah, he's all right. And he goes, yeah, he's all right. He said, but you know why he's here, right? And I said, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I said, I was like a drug conspiracy or something, right? Like, I mean, he goes, yeah, but he's also doing time in the state right now. So, you know, you're doing your federal time, but your your state, you you also got sentenced in the state and that's running. Yeah. And he's like, he's got like four life sentences in state for multiple murders. And I went, oh, um, okay. Like I didn't, I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, like he'll never leave the medium. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, I was like, well, what I don't really understand. And I want to say, and I probably have this wrong, but the story I was told was, this is back in the 70s and 80s when if you were in a county jail, county jails were not that secure. Yeah. So he was waiting to go to trial. And there were like, whatever, six informant or six people, six witnesses against him. So about 10 days before the trial, they give you the witness list. He gets the witness list. The next day he escapes from the county jail in a state case. A year later, he come, He walks back to the county jail, walks in the front door and says, hey, I'm so-and-so. You guys are looking for me. I'm Jim, whatever his name is. You're looking for me. I'm ready to turn myself in. They go, oh, okay. They, they check. Oh, wow. They handcuff him. Yeah, we've been looking for you. Appreciate you coming back. Right. So the, the, the district attorney's like, okay, well, we're going to put the trial together and they we need a continuance, whatever. So they've, you know, 60 days. And over the next month or so, they go to, they round up all the witnesses and they can't find any witnesses like three of them died like one like two are shot one was stabbed to death the other three are just missing and i was like and so they have to like drop the charges now eventually they end up getting them on a on a another charge or something like that he ends up being well the, the feds come in they grab him for drug conspiracy and the state comes in and they charge him with multiple some of these murders and he ends up getting a, a, like three life sentences or whatever it is in the state and the federal. He does his time in federal prison. And he was like, so, you know, he said, like, this is I'm still really green. Right. He's like, so this guy, um, De Geronimo, he's like, which sounds Indian, by the way, but it's actually French. So um, he was one of the he was one of the pretendians where they pretend to be Indians so they can get tobacco and smoke, smoke. They smoke yeah, tobacco. You know. Get a little benefits in there, you know, and he would be like, he's like, I, my name's De Geronimo. What are you talking about? Of course I'm Indian. It's like, it's Italian. So, um, <laughs> anyway, he, uh, so he was like, so, you know, I, I mean, he said, I know you like him, but you know, just keep in mind who you're, who you're hanging out with. He's like, and everybody, you know, they, most guys don't care. But what's so funny about that was I kind of always kept that. Of course, I'm still nice to the guy. Like I'm polite and I'm helping him and whatever he needs. He's an old guy to me. You're just an old guy. Yeah. So what was so funny was. About a month or two later, he's got like he used to put he used to keep his canvases. Sometimes he didn't he would keep canvases on top of the locker and they didn't want him to do that. And he would hide stuff behind it. And so one day this uh, this female guard comes in and she goes, she's like, um, you know, Jim or I forget what his last name was. Whatever. You know, Jim, get over here. And he, he, did you do this? And I told you, she goes, if I, you, you do this one more time, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to kick you out of the art room. And she's screaming and her face, you know, is sweaty and she's yelling and he, he starts smiling and he's kind of chuckling and she's like, what's so funny. And he's like, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. I'm no, nothing. I'm sorry. And so he's like, no, no, I'll get it down. I won't do it again. I I'm sorry. My fault. Dude. You're right. But when he, when she leaves, he and I are like walking back to the unit. I'm helping him bring some stuff. And he says, uh, I go, why'd you start laughing when she was yelling at you? And he goes, well, I was thinking, he said, it just, it just dawned on me when she was screaming at me that, you know, on the street, I'd have chopped her head off, thrown her head in the trunk of my car and driven around for a week. He said, until it started smelling, he said, but I'm in prison and there's nothing I can do. And I just, I don't know why it just struck me as funny. <laughs> And I was like, like, oh my God. 
like I wasn't toughened up to these guys and who I was around and their behavior. And, but that, you know, but you're right. He was, if you didn't know, That's if crazy. you met him on the street, he was a sweet, nice old man. Like you'd want to mow his yard, help him with his groceries. And, but the truth is, is he was a vicious, vicious, diabolical killer. Yeah. I don't get to use diabolical a lot. I believe that this warranted it. So here's, here's a good question that can go for both of you guys. Right. And I know Tom is probably experienced it some, I know I have, and Matt, I'm not sure about you, but like, how do you go about vetting? And I think this would probably become more of an issue uh, with the, the mob people, but do you vet the stories that people send you Matt at all? I mean, of course, I, I order a Freedom of Information Act on everyone. I do a deep dive. I speak with their attorneys. I call the U.S. attorney, district attorney. I speak with uh, multiple. No, I don't vet anybody. Like, I, I'm like, send me an article, bro. Okay, that's I'm what I meant. Four okay, podcasts at least, a week. At least like some articles or something. All like right, so I'll, give you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you what I need. Photograph. Far, far, far from far, far from perfect. I, I think Matt. Matt told me when I when I met him, his criteria for his guests are the mirror test. I don't know if you ever heard. You hold it up to the mouth. If it fogs up, you're in. <laughs> Doing four podcasts a week, the bar is low. True. Well, and that, True. that was the point is like you don't have a lot of time. Like yeah. you don't have a lot of time. Well, no, so so, so no. what, I, what, what I do is I'll ask for a press. Um, I'll give you an example. I'll put the name to Google. I won't look at the search. I'll look at the Google News. I'll look at the Apple News. I'll try to find like valuable third-party stories. I'll check out other podcasts, what they did. I'll take it with a grain of salt, but then what I try to do, and it doesn't always happen, I try to have an open forum, right? right? So say Wade comes on and says a whole bunch of things, right? If there's somebody reputable, not keywords reputable, and has paperwork or something that is against what you say, they're welcome to come on. They don't have to be as notable. They don't have to be famous. And I, I get to we push back and everybody else, I give an open forum. A lot of people don't take me on that. And I get I get the idea, well, I'm not I don't want to talk about my story. I don't wanna be public. Well, I offer I'll I'll blur out your face, I'll blur out your voice. If you want me to read something and I won't even say your name, and a lot of people don't take me up on it. So a lot of people say to me and push back on some of my guests, but I always have an open forum. And I'm, the other part is I'm like I'm Joe Rogan says this too. I'm not the I gotcha guy. I'm not looking to have you come on and paint you in a right. corner and pounce on you. You kind of you kind of touch on this earlier. If you're that guy, good luck getting guests. Right, right. So, well, that's yeah. something Brett's had a problem. Brett Johnson yeah. has had multiple guests on, and then pulled out their paperwork and sudden suddenly going in on them. And I and he's like, well, you know, if their paperwork's right, if this is right, if what they're saying is correct, and I'm like, so you're telling me you grabbed this guy's indictment and went through what the indictment said? Yeah. And you're going off of what the U.S. attorney said. He's like, well, yeah, they were indicted on. I'm like, are you serious? Like, you can't do that. And I was like, you're going to have a problem at some point. You're going to have a problem getting guests. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't probably do that. And, and I'll tell you something. Here's what bothers me about that, that, you know, going about it that way. And obviously, you know, Brett Johnson can run his channel however he wants. But um, here's what, what it, my issue with this is, is that I was indicted for, you know, and, you know, there's so many things like I never talk about, but I, I think I might have mentioned this before. I was actually indicted in Nashville, Tennessee on a gun charge. Oh, well. So when I was, when my house was raided, we'd had like, uh, we'd had our, my girlfriend when we first met, you know, we lived in a shitty area, right? Cause I owned all the houses, right? Like I own the house next to me. I own across the street, the houses, four houses on this street, like so I'm living there because it's easy for me to walk out the front door and go, you know, I have a security system. Like I'm not really worried about getting robbed, but we end up getting robbed. And so what well, she ends up moving in and she says she comes home with a gun. Now, granted, I'm on the run and I, but I'm also a convicted felon, but, and I just remember saying, eh, I feel like if we get robbed, we're never going to get to that gun and we're about a better, better chance of being shot with the gun. I was like, and honestly, if somebody, somebody broke in here. I don't think we're going to be here. And I'd rather they just give them the money and get out. Like, I'm not going to get into a shootout with, <laughs> with my girlfriend and her, and her, like, you know, her five-year-old son is in there. Like, it's like, Hey, you know, take this stuff and go. 
Now that actually happens. Anybody who's ever read my book or heard my whole story, like there's actually, there is a home invasion. These guys get the drop on us. What's so funny about that is she was always saying, oh, somebody comes in here. Like she was a military, she was in the military. She's like, somebody comes in here, trust me, I'll execute them. And so we end up getting robbed. We get a, have a home invasion. She doesn't get to the gun. They steal a bunch of money. They steal the gun. They steal her car. Like it's none of it works out. They take our phones and you know, they, they leave. Like, and I remember I was like, you know, what happened to get into the gun? Like what soldier? Like I thought you were going to execute these guys. I was going to say, I didn't give anything to her that conversation. Oh, it was like, <laughs> so, so when I get arrested, like a, a few days later, I end up getting arrested. They go in the house, they take everything. They find a receipt for the gun. Now keep in mind when she bought the gun, I said, She's like, do you want to go to the gun range? I said, no, I'm not interested. She, I said, in fact, I said, if you're going to have that gun, you need to have a childproof like safe because your son gets into everything. Yeah. So she goes out and she buys a safe. I don't even know the, com the combination. I've never touched the gun. I didn't know she was going to buy the gun. He was in a safe I didn't have access to. I get indicted for the gun. Now, what ends up happening is because they had a receipt in her name, so here's what happens. This, I got charged with what's called constructive possession. The elements of constructive possession are I had to instruct someone to purchase a gun that I would have access to or I would have on my person. So here's the, imagine how, I, so how did I get indicted? That means a U.S. attorney went into a grand jury and said, we know Mr. Cox is guilty of this crime because he instructed his girlfriend to, to get the gun. She never told them that. She told them he never touched the gun. He didn't know I was getting the gun. He didn't have access to the gun. So they said he instructed her to get the gun. He had access to the gun. He had the gun, uh, uh, and he, he planned on using that, that gun and having it in his possession. So they blatantly lied to a grand jury to get me indicted. Now, luckily, when I found out that I was charged with it. I said, I'll go to trial. I'm not going to plead guilty to a gun that I never had. I never touched. I didn't have access to my lawyer was like, Matt, what does it matter? It's only five years or th I think it's three years. She was, it was only three. It's only three years. They're going to run it concurrent. It doesn't add any. And I was like, it doesn't matter. I don't want to have a gun. I'm not going to, I will not admit to anything. I didn't do. I'll tell you everything I did. So she, they end up dropping the charge because I said, I, I said, look, all I got to do is put Am Amanda on the stand she's going to explain what happened i i beat that case she goes back talks to the u.s attorney u.s attorney says all right forget it like like you don't already have me on enough shit right <laughs> so so knowing that i have a real problem with anybody who says oh well i read the indictment well guess what that indictment don't mean shit because right. they'll get up and lie their asses off to a grand jury and get yep. you indicted for stuff that you did not do and you're not like your defense isn't even allowed in for the grand jury hearing. No. Right? Yeah. Like no, it's they, just the prosecutor or DA or whatever. And but it's not there. like the prosecutor said where we want to charge him with that. Yes. Or no. They have to prove elements of the crime. They have to say, we know this because of this. Like we spoke with his girlfriend. She admitted he told her to get the gun. Lie. He told like they had to say all that. She never told him that. She told him the opposite. It's that old saying, they say, uh, you can indict a ham sandwich because right. it doesn't really take a whole lot because they're only hearing one side of it. Yep. I remember asking my lawyer, like, it was like a year into my situation. I wasn't even indicted yet. And then I was just like, this is odd. Like, I'm still not even indicted. And finally, like, I don't even know when it actually happened, but I talked to him. I'm like, you know, I can't believe I still haven't been indicted. He's like, oh, yeah, you've been indicted. I'm like, you didn't tell me. And he's like, it doesn't matter. He's like, I didn't indict anybody. He's like. I said, he said, I'm not even allowed in there. He said, I figured you would get indicted. I'm like, well, I'd at least wanted to know. I don't really know what difference it would have made. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's really unfair. And I think if anybody does come back where a grand jury chooses to not indict, your case has really got to be absolute shit. Yeah. yeah. It's just so stacked against you that you're going to get indicted. Yeah. But I was going to say, but at what, as far as vetting is concerned, like I'll, I'll have them send me something. Listen, I've had guys who sent, they send me so much overwhelming stuff. I'm like, oh, bro, bro. Like, I get it. You sold some drugs. Yeah. 
we're going to talk about you getting sold some drugs. You went to jail for three years. Like, I don't need the whole case history. I think it's probably more of an issue when it comes to like people that were involved in, in the mob and stuff like that. Yeah. Tom, I'm sure you've probably seen yep. uh, the guest that um, Stacks had on not too long ago. Oh, Gaetano Castellano. Yeah, guy, whatever the hell his name was. And I mean, like, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't look good. Like, they do really kind of done a number on him. Yeah. Um, but I mean, to me at that point, like, if I'm stacks, I really got to do just a little bit of research and you'll kind of find out that maybe it's not all fitting together. My, uh, my sister lives in, uh, Fort Lauderdale with somebody from that family and knows them really well. And I would never, you know, Hey, was this true or not true? But like, if going to my head, just, Hey, call my sister say, Hey, can you ask me if he knows this kid is, is this kid really your cousin? The short answer would have been no. So yeah. something that could be easily found out. Well, like the fact that, that Paul Castellano didn't even have a brother is kind well, of that's the, that's, the, that's, that's the rub, you know. He's, he's claiming that his uncle or what, uncle is Paul Castellano, that his dad was Paul Castellano's brother. Yeah, but Paul, he didn't have a sister, yeah. yeah so. Paul Castellano was the guy that was taken out in front of Spark Steakhouse well, by also, John Gotti and Sammy DeBoer. Also, also, he would have had her when he was like 60. Yeah, yeah, very, very old there, so... I don't know. What's the benefit for someone doing something like that? I wonder. They're, 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 it's like, you know, you committed fraud. They, it's like, like media fraud. Like they get excited over getting over on people and they get like the recognition that they never would have gotten otherwise. And to they me, don't, it's yeah, going to come out. Yeah. You know, especially with guys that like that is kind of, I think Jeff kind of takes those kind of things personal. Yeah. And because that's that's what he's about. So I'm not faulting him for it. He yeah. is that I got you guy. Yeah. You know, that's what he, you know, kind of prides himself on. Um, but I mean, like, it's only going to go so far. Like, you're not going to be able to do that. But, you know, once or twice. And as soon as somebody new comes on the scene, they're going to they're going to dig into you. Like, I just dropped an interview with uh, Joe Colombo's grandson. Oh, yes. yes Chris so the son. And, you know, I was at their home and I've done that in their basement. So like, this is very yeah, vetted because I'm sitting right next to his father as we're doing it. And then obviously yeah. we're in, we're in Joe Colombo's old house, you know, yep. up, in, up in upstate New York. So, and, and obviously we didn't get into anything really mob, you know, I talked to him about his family legacy and you know how he kind of, you know, walk with that as, so to speak. But you know, when you lie like that, like this guy was doing about how he was a, a made member and couldn't tell you which part and all that, like that just, I don't know. Yeah, that that yeah. doesn't pass the sniff test. And, yeah. you know, I've, like I said, it's a big deal in what we do. And I, I think to an extent, everybody may exaggerate a little bit. You know, it's yeah. that Jordan Belfort uh, kind of thing. Like Tommy yeah. Chong said, everything's got to be the most of. You know, if you got drunk, it was the most drunk you'd ever been. Or if you're arriving fast, it was the fastest you've ever been. I think to an extent, everybody might embellish a little bit. But some of them guys just take it to a whole nother level. Um, So... There was a guy recently that went on uh, Ron English's show. Yeah. Uh, now, here's what's interesting. What's what was his name? I'm I'm looking him up right now. I can't find his name. Uh, I can't. Remember. You're talking about the guy that was supposed to be in Whitey Bulger's gang. Yes. Y'all were talking about that, and I guess apparently he'd done like multiple shows and was a total fraud. Yeah. Um. So Ron, let's go with real quick. He may have Ron. Took it down. I'm sorry. He may have took it down. Maybe. Well, the book came out. Oh, you got damn he, got, he had a book. The guy, yeah. Wow. Oh, listen, I'll tell you the story. It's hilarious because you you understand that I was like, um, uh, I was a uh, um a friend of uh, or I was I, I've been speaking with this guy. So, um, hold on a second. I'll, I'll explain. Hold on. Let me put. Let me put Paul. Yeah, yeah. Legend is actually at the airport, waiting for, a, oh, <laughs> waiting for a flight. So, um, all right. So we're gonna, uh, Wade and I will finish it up. Thanks for having me. Check out the New Theory podcast, Tom Levecki. I'll see you both uh, soon, gentlemen. And, and uh, Matt, thank you so much, Wade. Always a pleasure. Be good, guys. See you in all a couple right. weeks. Ciao. See ya. So, that guy, I cannot believe I can't remember his name. I, I like, I literally had him. Um, I think we spoke about this the last episode we did with Brett. Oh, did we? Okay. Yeah. Well, then I can't remember the gentleman's name, but I remember they y'all talked about it. 
Yeah, I can't believe I can't remember his name. Whitey? No, I'm not going to remember it. Yeah, anyway, yeah, his whole story was fake. Like, he had provided fake documents. He had fooled... Uh, he Listen, he fooled all kinds of people into paying him money. He got advances. He got all kinds of stuff. Got a book deal. And the book came out. Like, I'm, it literally showed up on my thing when I was like, oh, my God, that's the guy's book. Like, they published the book. And see, when you see a book, you're thinking, all right, it's legit. Somebody had to vet this shit, you know? Yeah, they didn't. They Like, he, he had provided a few documents, and then they were like, oh, it's such a good story. And they write it. Well, once they... Once they wrote the article and it came out in like the New York Times or something, everybody just assumed it was real. Yeah. Complete bullshit. Wow. Can you imagine? <laughs> like, I mean, but like you're you're forever tainted. Yeah. Like that's that's always your oh, that's the guy that was a fraud. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's that's always gonna be your thing. You're always gonna be labeled as that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think he cares. Like the guy's a, a total drunk. Yeah. Like he's been in it. He, first of all, he had said, listen, there's whole podcasts that are dedicated to this guy. And I mean, they're like where they've done podcast after podcast and they're hilarious. I forget I, the name of the podcast that, that did it. I've seen podcasts that that is their only, I guess, objective. And their only videos is to poke holes in other people's podcasts right. and stories. And they'll post like a clip of what they say. And then freeze frame it and put up, you know, everything that contradicts it. And I mean, they put a lot of work into it. Like it's a yeah. lot of work to, you know, expose these people. Well, you know that there's a podcast called Who Are These Podcasters? I've heard of that, yeah. I just I just did a, an interview with the guy. <laughs> the guy's name's Carl. Um, I forget his last name, but I just did a whole like two hour, hour and 45 minutes with him <laughs> about all these podcasts that he calls out and what they do. And it's hilarious. Hey, everybody, I really appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor in the description box. I'm going to leave the link to Tom's channel. I'm also going to leave the link to Wade's channel. And I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, both of these guys have, well, Tom has a business slash, you know, kind of an interview style channel. He interviews a lot of different types of guests. Uh, Wade interviews predominantly um, a mob uh, or, you know, mafia style, uh, guys, but he also, he also does like, you know, porn stars and, uh, criminals in general. And I think he's branching out to other stuff. Both of them are branching out to the other stuff. Please click on, please subscribe to their channels. I really do appreciate it. Please do also do me a favor, share this video. It really does help. Thank you very much. See ya. That's it. Wade is still here. I thought he was going to Oh, I, I, <laughs> I thought you were hanging up. I got rid of it. I was like, I thought you were talking to me. I'm sorry. Well, not for that. Go. Well, recording it restarted it. Okay. All right. So, um, and I'm sure Colby will edit all this out. So, um, or edit out whatever. But to be honest, I don't think so. Actually, now that I think about it, like Colby leaves a lot of stuff in that I'm like, you could have, you know, he's like, ah, it's funny, you know, <laughs> especially if I look like a jackass, there's a good chance that Colby leaves it in.